All right, guys, welcome to the OTC Club. Make sure you guys press that bottom right button um, with the feather on it to tweet out the room on your timeline. This space is being recorded and then it will be up on our YouTube channel um, along with the past episodes. And if you're not already following, please follow our guest, Pro Trader Mike, and the rest of the panel. And Pro Trader Mike, how was your weekend? Weekend was very nice. We, it, it rained only towards the end of the day, so the whole day got to fill in with a lot of great activity. Saturday was golf, and today was my, my son's baseball game. Doubleheader, they won both games. It was very nice. Nice. I know. Where are you from? I'm from New York, Long Island originally. Oh, wow. Okay. <clears throat> yeah. New York, New York. I a lot of that on TV yesterday brought back, you know, hit home because I'm a New Yorker and, you know, know, a lot of that 9-11. I never knew a lot about 9-11 until I saw some of the things going on yesterday. It was pretty uh, – Yeah, it was crazy. Yeah, that was crazy. Yeah. So All right. <laughs> You guys, make sure you um, test out your emojis. And um, when you tweet out during this conversation we're having with Pro Trader Mike, you guys could hashtag the OTC Club. And then so we could uh, go ahead and interact with you guys all. All right. So tell us a little bit about yourself, Pro Trader Mike. Well, I used to be a young man, but now I'm an older man. I have a family, family man. I have three... Uh, you know, a couple of kids, a couple of nice little docks and dogs that I hang, a little lap dogs. They trade with me, bring me good luck sometimes. And I've been trading the markets for 30 years. I've always had a passion, great at math, and saw a lot of people making money in my earlier days very easily, working in the same building that I had worked in as day traders. And I said, you know, they're leaving real early in some nice looking cars and I'm going to lunch right now in my, in my piece of crap car. So <laughs> that's when I first started getting into day trading. It was back in when so's trading first started small order execution system. It was called at the time. Have you ever heard of that? No, it was when Instanet <clears throat> first started. It was the, the uh, electronic communication between the traders. Stocks used to trade in eighths, quarters, halves, and whole dollars when I first started. Wow. Whoa. Have you guys heard of that? <clears throat> no. <laughs> nah, man. I'm a toddler in the game. What it Never was, it was cool, man. My, how I got into it, my friend who worked downstairs, I would sit by him. And in an hour, he made $3 million in his account. What he would do, what? it was called Instanet. It gave the small trader execution over the big boys with 1,000 shares or less. If you put in 1,000 shares or less, you got executed before anybody. It happened for like almost six months to a year. And... He would get filled, and then the stock would run eighth, quarter, half, or whatever. All the other orders would go in, and he would sell it, and that was his system. And I'm like, this is unbelievable. I want to I want to do that, too. And that's what it was. It was called so, – they were called Soes Bandits, S-O-E-S Bandits. At the and time. he made three mil in an hour, you said. No, he made three million. That's what he had in his account. He would make thousands of dollars in an hour. And then just leave. By the sounds and, of it, uh, that, man, that man found an advantage and he put his foot on it and then he won. <laughs> that, that is what yeah. the OTC and this trading market is about is find your edge, smell the blood, and go for the jugular. <laughs> exactly. Sorry, that's a bit forward, but. <laughs> no, it's, it's, it's pretty spot on because. <laughs> If you don't, the market's going to grab you by the jugular if you don't have that action going on on the aggressive side. So, yeah, Mike, uh, now that we're talking about trading, how about you tell us a little bit about how you got started trading? Yeah, let me tell you that. So I was working for the man for a long time <laughs> okay. in, internet, in internet marketing, and the company was very, very successful, and it got bought out by a private company Shit. in uh, by Lex. Uh, it, was, it was like a data company that got bought out by 
uh, almost a billion dollars. And I learned about data and building websites. And from that company, I, I worked at three or four other companies as a sales manager doing the same thing. But I always traded at each of the companies. I always had a great salary in the corporate. But I always made everybody a lot of money. And I always could do what they did. So after being taken advantage of multiple times at different businesses by the bosses, bait and switch, you rise up in this peak where you do amazing at the company for two or three years, and then they totally take advantage of you with golden handcuffs, like there's nothing better out there but their company. And I always wind up getting in arguments and moving on and then going to the next six-figure job. And then I said, you know what, I could, I, I, I could do this by myself because... I'm on the stock twits. My friend told me about it. And I'm like, honey, I'm going to work. But I didn't go to work. I went to my mom's house in the back on a little laptop and started Mojo Day Trading. I started on stock twits, just giving out stock picks because I joined this chat room that had a really good looking girl in it. And I'm like, this is great. <laughs> I could look at her all day and I can get Sounds great picks. Right. You know, <laughs> and after the fifth pick, I was on the first one. They moved to the fifth, the sixth, and I was already not knowing what to do with the loser I was on. And out of the month, it wasn't a profitable scenario. I said I could do this a lot better. And I started giving out picks when I was at work. And some of the people are like, this is great. You know, I'll start a Skype like this girl's doing and I'll charge you $99 and it went from five people to 10 people and then the guy said Mike teach me everything that you know because I've got a really great system that I'll tell you about I used to be a professional poker player before I was a day trader and I was doing it online I was playing online tournaments multi-tabling playing six or seven tournaments a day 18 hours making a lot of money until one day when I logged on, the government put up something saying you can't play poker online anymore and shut my business down overnight. So I'm like, wow, I'm like, damn, I can't play poker no more. Let's see. I'll go back to the day trading, which I love. See if I can apply and just do my day trading. And, and I just did that for a, <clears throat> a couple of months and I didn't have any systems. I just traded a thousand shares of everything. I bought a thousand shares if it worked. Great. If it didn't, I tried not to lose too much. And that's what I did for like six months. <clears throat> but then the light went off. I journaled every single trade. Like in poker, I journaled every hand that I played. I came up with a system, excuse me, <clears throat> of playing 11 hands, pocket aces, pocket kings, pocket queens, Ace, king, ace, queen, ace, jack, all the top premium hands. And I get rid of all the rag stuff, all the bad hands. But when those good hands came up, I had positive expectancy on my side. With pocket aces, I can get very aggressive. That's the system. And I can win a lot of money. The strategy is, is how to bet that hand. So if I pushed all my chips in, everyone would fold. And I learned you don't push all your chips in when you got a great hand. You got to milk it. You got to play it. So I really don't have a good hand. And then I win a lot of money with the strategy on milking it. So the system was the great hand. The strategy was how to play it. And I brought that to the stock market. And after six months of journaling every single trade, I saw a pattern that the biggest winners happened through par, through even numbers stocks on the charts the biggest green bars were always through the even numbers twenty dollars thirty dollars five dollars didn't matter what the even number was the higher the number the bigger the stock would go through the even number so it really didn't matter to look at charts because if i knew the stock was at 490 and it was going to go through the Heinz five. I call it the Heinz trade play. It's going to make a big green bar through five and then another big green bar up to 550. So 15 minutes before it makes these two green bars, I know because of the system, I'm playing it through the even number. Those two green bars should materialize. And that's what I call the Heinz trade play. 
And that thing happens all the time. And I've taught over thousands of traders this system in 10 years. And that's what I run Mojo Day Trading on. Just that trade play and just that system. Everything else is for fun and gambling. Heinz is the business. Okay. Wow. That sounds that. cool. <laughs> what do you think? So do you just trade, um, like you do stocks? Do you do just OTCs, <clears throat> big boards? Um, do you do crypto? I do anything that's going through an even number. Crypto, I bought Bitcoin for the first time at 980 because I knew it was going through a thousand. $980? Yeah, the first time. Holy the, shit. The next time I went all in on Bitcoin was 9,990. I wow. knew it was going through 10,000. And when it went through 10, it touched 11 and it went to 19. Wow. At 20,000, when it was 19,990, I went all in on Bitcoin. It went through 20,000 like a beast. At 24,990, it went through 25 like a beast. And at 29,990, it went through 30 like a beast. Those are the ways to trade it. Any other number you're trading it through is a gamble because it may not work. I know from journaling thousands and thousands of trades, there's an algorithm that takes place in the markets. The markets are run by computers and the computers take over in the 90s and it goes through the even number. You'll always see a large supply of stock on the ask or in the crypto market on the ask, a large supply as it goes through the even number. And that's a bullish indicator where most of the people in the trading world see that as a bearish indicator. Wow. So what do you think about, because a lot of the stocks um, investors and crypto investors, it's starting to, you know, people are starting to diversify or they're starting to get curious about each other's spaces. Like we get a lot of crypto people asking us like, hey, what's up with stocks? Like, how do I do it? How do I trade it? And then vice versa. Do you believe that, a lot of us should diversify and go into both spaces? A hundred percent. If there was more than that, I would say that. But yes, you ha I make it like a pizza pie. So you take the slice, slice it in half, 50%. Maybe you got 50% in stocks. Okay, that would be good. And then that 50% could be made up of different kind of stocks, small caps, medium and large, and different strategies like covered call writing and things you could do with stocks. The other half could be uh, crypto currency by itself as a maybe percentage, 15, 20 percent. Crypto mining, maybe a slice of the pie. You're a crypto miner. You can make passive income doing that. And futures trading, you could trade the futures, which I do, as another slice of the pie and maybe even, you know, another job, another slice of income in there. And that's how I business wise like to like to like, like I don't like to have all my eggs in one basket. So doing the crypto is the future. I've been a crypto miner since 2016 on the GPU side, not on the ASIC side. I don't mind Bitcoin. I mine Ethereum, Aeon, Ravencoin, uh, and all the other little digibyte and all the beautiful little gems like that. The and then you've been doing stocks for 30 years. And I've been doing stocks for 30 years. Look at you. Yeah, he's just a guy. Jack of, yeah, he's just a jack of all trades, isn't he? Yeah. The <laughs> next time you come Thank on, you. he's going to be like, so NFTs. <laughs> right. I got yeah. I Let's go. the NFTs, honey. Those are cool. You have? Yeah. I, I want I have I have one or two. Someone made one about, like, an NFT about me and stuff. And they try to sell it, like, the mojo and with it was pretty cool. I, I'll show it to you after the show. I'll, I'll okay, tweet it. yeah, you have to show that to us. But yeah. I like the, I would. I think that's going to be. The, mm -hmm. You don't sell NFTs for seventy thousand, hundred thousand, what they're going for. If it's not going to, if it's that ain't fading out anytime soon. And if people right. think that, they're out of their minds because yeah, it's you know it's insane. It's, it's insane. amazing. It's a global market for sure. That, that you oh, can boy. make a circle. <laughs> Like you could color a circle and paint, close your eyes, squiggle some lines <laughs> through it, call it an NFT. <laughs> who you, and sell, you know, 
but you have to make a hundred of them. So you have a collection of a collection of crap that you could sell. That you'll never do again. So or, that limited collection. or just take a picture of a rock. And then you're no. Ethereum rocks. <laughs> Ethereum rocks. Yes. You know, the guy who, the guy who had the pet rock really lost out, you know, he's right, like, he's I, I got this pet rock, but I know one will buy it. And it never caught on. But the guy who's like, dude, I'll, I'll take Homer and I'll twist his nose around and sell it online was a genius. Jesus. Jesus. It's so <laughs> freaking crazy. But so there's a lot t- of great stocks. Like, you know what stock that I really, besides TCAT and Dolphin Entertainment, those are all, you know, all, everyone knows that. My big play, check this out. I think it makes sense. After the lawsuits are gone from insider trading, <laughs> which they did, you know. But the company did. It's Eastman Kodak, right? Kodak. It's been sitting there. I remember like, Six months ago or a year ago, look at the chart. It made a run to 50, like out of control, crazy, from like where it is now, $7. Imagine if, because they're in digital imaging and digital everything, they announced like an NFT division, that they're just going to specialize in NFTs and digital this. And dude, that stock can, I mean, out of nowhere, go up and be like, the new AMC GME clove combination of short of yeah. of, of, of of Moass. Co- you know? Yeah, Kodak is definitely a Christine stock. I think. <laughs> I I want to see the Moass. You know what the Moass is, right? Yeah. Kodak is not mine. Mine is Sears. <laughs> yeah, Sears doesn't yes. have Moass. Though. Mo, it don't have Moass. The mother of all short. <laughs> no Moass. The mother of all short squeezes. I was just gonna say I was lost with that. With that one, but no, GME AMC, AMC. I was thinking something completely different. Uh, <laughs> AMC GME AMC is the Moas. Okay. The so speaking of, of AMC, short, short speaking of short squeezes, AMC. I, I gotta know what was your most successful trade. Out here I, in the streets. I, I picked AMC in my newsletter at 25. It wasn't my most successful, yeah. but, I, but I picked it 50%. You know, it's it's 50 now, so it's up 100% from where I picked it. But it's official. I actually sent it out as a pick in my – I sent you a copy of my Swing Trade newsletter. It's on my Twitter now, too. I posted the FAMI pick. My Swing Trade newsletter, I've been sending it out for 10 years, and it had AMC – and when, when the COVID came, I picked Moderna at 32. I picked NVAX at 485. I picked a group of education companies like Bright Family Education and some of these other f- education online companies. I picked Domino's Pizza at like 50 is 500 now. And just some of these ones that I had an inkling that were going to do good with COVID. Those were actually... In that two month time, my biggest set of winners I've ever hit in the newsletter for my subscribers. But the biggest stock ever that went up went from 33 cents without splitting in six months to $72 per share. And everyone knows wow. the name of it. And it's called Plug Power. Oh, yes. I wish I got on that. Jesus. Yeah, I got on Plug. Woo. Jeez. And it always went up with uh, Ballad Power, BLDP, and Fuel Cell. When Plug would move, Ballard would move, and Fuel Cell would move. So you could play the trio, like the shippers. When Top Ships moves, Ship moves, Sino moves, Panel moves, and SB moves. Like that whole little group, you can play it. <clears throat> wow. Yeah, it's cool. So what, okay, so what was your biggest mistake you think that you've made in the past 30 years? In trading or life? (laughs) (laughs) We'll get into life later. Let's start with trading. Well, I tell, like I say, a good, when I turned, I'm I'm like, okay, I'm 55, I'm like 56, but I have 56 (laughs) years of mistakes not to make, I tell you. And in trading, that's huge. I have 30 years of mistakes not to make in trading. It's it's a big advantage. It's a big edge. I've been there, done it. 
had ice cream pushed in my face, not once, twice, three, four, five, six, seven, a lot of times. So I could tell you, look, when someone comes up to you and says, smell this ice cream, you shouldn't do it because they're going <laughs> to stick it in your face. I mean, come on. Okay, so give us an example of one of the, like, to you, what your biggest mistake was in your trading career so far that taught you the biggest lesson. Is the same mistake over and over is blowing up the account. By yep. doing that is the same mistake over and over and over and over. One, it's no respect for the account and the money and a little bit about yourself. But what you've done is you can't accept. And we're so aggressive and crazy traders. We want to win at everything. But it takes a long time to learn about variance that you can't win at everything that variance has a big factor in everything that you do poker sports trading do you know what variance is no explain let to me us. explain variance is when you have a hundred hands of poker and 10 of those hands are going to uh, 30 of those hands are going to be crap and 70 of them are going to be good you're going to win on 11 in a row, and then you're going to go on a bad streak of like maybe an hour or two hours. That's variance. No matter what you do and how you play, no matter how good you are, you're going to go through a bad streak. You're not, it's That's not going to go in your favor. Something's going to happen. Your internet went out and you lost. So anything beyond imaginary variance will come in and you'll lose. And if you don't deal with it correctly as a trader, you instantly blow up your account. Yes, because like you take a nap. <laughs> well, take no, a lot. You need you need short. He's, he's dead on. You need a short term memory. And what I what I share with people is like you gotta forget the 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 downfalls, the big red days. You have to look at that as opportunity. And like like you said, minimal things. When they when they when they blocked us all out, remember GMC everything like every brokerage, RBC, my bro, I was locked out every morning for like an hour. And we all remember that. Like, yes, people yeah. above are, were were locked out, and we we had to take advantage of it, or we had to deal with it. Um, so we, everything hits you in this market, especially OTC, and and short term memory is key. So preach that definitely, yeah. Mister Trade. What what I have done in, and it's the repetitive pattern every time you're in a losing trade and you add to the loser and it will come you out of you know 10 of them you're going to be right maybe and save yourself six but there's so such a bad factor against you that that trade right there is going to blow you up because if you go over a 50% and you lose 50% of your money, you have to make like 100 to 200% to make it back. And your emotions are so against you. I've never seen a trader after he takes a big loss be able to save himself like that and come back. Wow. Yep. And then you take even riskier trades and then you just end up blowing it Correct. completely. Yeah. It's so true. Guys, what I have found and how I have helped and built my mojo day trading while I'm still, why I'm still in business for over 10 years. And I've taught thousands of people. These guys are successful in my room because one, they're trading firm capital. I have a program where you trade on a simulator for 15 days. This was unheard of. I used to email hedge funds and these firm, I've been doing this for 30 years. I'm like, dude, let me show you with your millions you have, you know, allocate a million to me. Let me show you how good I could trade. I'll do it on a demo account even. And they're like, you know, demo doesn't work because it's not real money. So we're not going to give it to you. And so all of a sudden now that these firms, you trade on a simulator, there's four firms that I know that will let you trade firm capital. They supply you with a simulator with a hundred grand. You got to make 6% in 15 days. It comes to like three or $400 a day over 15 days. They want to see you manage the account and trade for 15 days without losing more than two grand in a day. If you lose two grand in one day, they don't want you trading their capital. They don't think you could manage the money. But if you stop yourself at $1,000 for the day and say, I'm done for the day at $1,000. Let's come back tomorrow because it's my career now and I'm going to do this forever. 
So you come back the next day, you do your $500 goal, like the thousand didn't even happen. And 16 days later, maybe 17 days later, you hit from a hundred grand to 106. You got a funded account. You don't have to put up any of your own capital. You keep 80% of the profits. The firm keeps 20%. They want you to trade with them forever. It's the most incredible program because you don't need 25 grand. I'm trading the NASDAQ and the E-mini S&P 500 futures. They trade like 24 hours a day. I already made $300 tonight just trading one or two lots. $500 to 1000 is my goal for the day. I shut it off. And I do that with the futures. I do that with the stocks. And it's a really nice living, man. It's really comfortable. And the futures, the best part is it's a 10-minute business. You turn it on. You do three trades. You turn it off. And that's enough to make you a funded account. And that's the Mike, best. It's the best. This is crazy, man. It's like I'm like literally writing everything you're saying down. And you guys, I posted um, on the OTC Club's timeline i posted mike's discord up there if you guys are interested um go ahead and press that link but mike that's crazy i've never heard that it's that's it's insane. unheard of and i promise you i'm passionate about it i'm gonna coach you this is unheard of in the business so like you want to go play great golf you need to go hire a coach you want to be a great trader i'll get you through the evaluation you pay me a little bit of money for the month for coaching and I'll get you through that 15-day evaluation to a funded account where you're making 500 to 1000 a day off a 100 grand account, no problem. Wow. Yep. How much do you charge? I charge between 99 and 199 a month for the, for the coaching. If you're like, you know, you, I'm gonna, I know every person that comes to me because you're going to tell me your story if you're – you know, you have no money, you can't pay the bills, and this is your last story. I don't want to take all your money from you. And Nick, you know, I'll give you a discount from the one ninety nine. I'll do it for a hundred dollars because okay, if I get you funded, you're gonna take me out for golf or buy me a drink. That's the hundred. Or a that's nice the dinner. Right there. That's the hundred. <laughs> yeah. nice dinner. Where, Absolutely. That's I, love I, think. I love this. I love this. I love this. So Mike, give me the Mike, hundred. send me send me that link. I'll definitely uh, tweet it out for you. So uh, go ahead and post the link in the, in yeah, the yeah. OTC. I, I tell my followers that, you know, there's a lot of gentlemen, great traders like you that they need to follow because my strategy is not for most. Um, losing three quarters of a million is not up that alley of most people. <laughs> um, but it's go big or go home for me. So, uh, yeah. yes. uh, but I do, I do, I do never give my traders, my followers, any picks that, that I, that I feel are big two risk for reward. Um, I try to try to tell people that with a 5K account <laughs> or 20K account differently than than a 500 account account. But uh, man, I really appreciate that. I, I did check your profile. I love what you're doing. Thank you. Thank oh, you, man. Amazing. I appreciate that a lot. Thank you very much. You guys, I posted I posted the link to Mike's Discord up on the top of this chat. If you guys are interested or you guys want to tweet it out, it's at the top of the chat. Just press that in the link of his Discord is there. Mike, do yes. you want to give an OTC Club discount right now to everyone in the chat room? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Let's go. You know OTC what I'll Club do? Discount. I'll, how about I'll give, I'll give you, you could pay me later. I'll give it all for free because it works. And then when you're what? done and you make all this money, you'll be like, Mike, charge me this. Pay. I'm paying you this. I'm with you for a lifetime. That's okay, what I so do. what do we do? You Everyone get a subscription. You get a subscription. So, you get yeah. a subscription. Everyone, Everyone gets a subscription. Right you all you gotta do is come to the chat Mike room turn into Oprah. and say hi when I message you <laughs> and that you're from the OTC club and you got in for free. I'll give you the services for free. And after you've made wow. a bunch of money, you'll be like, I'm ready to go on subscription, Mike. And I wanna be a master trader. Like I see the guys in your chat room, the guys above me. I've got about a dozen people on Discord that <laughs> have the master title next to their name. They're on subscription for over five years. Wow. Oh, that is just amazing. Yeah. So their lifetime. Mm -hmm. So I know if I give you my education, you'll love it. You'll make money and you'll stay with me forever. 
So I'll oh, thank make it you, on Mike. The wow. Thank you for that OTC Club like little membership, free membership. Um, yep. That's amazing. So all you guys have to do is DM him and yeah. let him know you guys were in the room, and then pay him later. Yeah, pay. You know, after the first month, I'll be like, dude, I got you this. I gave you this. We did this. We made all this. We got. We love each other. You know, would you like to go on we love each other. now and hook and hook me up a little bit? Of it? <laughs> yeah. Like, okay. Great. Done. Thank you. And just mention the OTC club, you guys. Mention That's it. it. <laughs> Whoever mentions Amazing. the OTC club, you're in. Listen. Ring it. That's right. That is so awesome. So much awesome. It couldn't be awesomer. Do yourself a favor. Thank you again. It's a cartoon. I got it. I got it. So yeah, oh. I tweeted out Zach. You know, I sent Zach the, my fammy pick, and hopefully he'll see it and uh, retweet Zach it. Morris? He, he yeah, retweeted Zach. one of my tweets once, like <laughs> once. I I'm gonna message him right now. Go ahead, get him to uh, retweet his tweet, Christine. <laughs> he did. I said, well, Mr. Zach Morris, I'm on. Uh, well, four people liked it. Let's see who liked it. If it could be him, that would be unbelievable. But I so, got it. It's got oh, five likes. He'll retweet it. No, he didn't tweet it, <laughs> but he may. All right, Mike. So I know now that we got out all the all for you, uh, tell us a little bit more about your trading strategy. I know all of us want to know about it. Yeah. <clears throat> so let me let, let me hook you up with the, with the goods. I I didn't invent it at all. It was invented in the 1960s. By William J. O'Neill. He's the editor of the Investor's Business Daily newspaper. You heard of that paper, right? Besides the Wall Street Journal, it's the IBD, the Investor's Business Daily. Okay, yeah. And he, he's the, they, he makes that newspaper. Uh, he, oh, has wow. the, he has the number one book on Wall Street selling for the last 35 years. It's called How to Make Money in Stocks. A Winning System in Good and Bad Times by William J. O'Neill. It's the number one book on Wall Street forever. And I saw it 35 years ago. Woo, it was a long time ago. And what he did, <laughs> he, I had a money manager. His name was Sed Moses. And Sed Moses was not even 30 years old was the top three manager on Wall Street in the late 1990s. And he won the U.S. Investment Challenge for three years in a row. And he wrote an article on how he won and what his system was. And it was called the Ken Slim System by William O'Neill. I'm like, okay. Wow. David Ryan, the, the, that year before, won three years in a row the U.S. Investment Challenge. His system that he, and he works for O'Neill, was the Ken Slim system by William O'Neill. I'm like, damn, I better learn this Ken Slim yeah, absolutely. system because these guys are picking Cisco systems when it was $10 a share when it had $5 million in the float. Now it has billions. Uh -huh. They pick yeah. applied materials integrated device technologies, all of the greatest companies, Apple, Amazon, when they first started. What O'Neill did was he built the first database and saw all the companies that went from 20 to 100 per share, put them in the computer, found they had seven similar characteristics called the Ken Slim. The, it's an acronym, seven letters. C stands for current earnings per share. A stands for annual sales per year, the revenues. The N stands for new. Each of the companies had a new CEO, a new product, something new that made it grow. The S is shares outstanding. Every winning company had less than 20 million shares in the float before it made its big move. I is in, L is leading indicator. Every stock has a relative strength. The relative strength of the greatest performing stocks of all time had a 75 and greater, meaning they perform better than 75% of the stocks in the market. I is institutional sponsorship. 
and M is market momentum. If you have a stock with those seven characteristics, you got yourself America's next biggest winner. And there's a database called Market Smith. Back in the day, when I was a subscriber of, this of the data, it used to come on Saturday, delivered to my house in a book. The green book was the NASDAQ. The blue book was the American. And the other book was the New York. And it had hundreds of pages of charts. And I would just look through the charts and put the Ken Slim system in place, take my top 20, limit it to my top 10, then my top five, and that was my picks for the week. And now it's all electronic. The database is online. You could be a subscriber right. of Market Smith. That's the database. I do research every Sunday night. I send out a newsletter with five picks based on that Ken Slim system, but on the small caps side. Stocks between 50 cents and between $5 usually with a low float do really, really well in this market. I picked BBIG at 280. I picked, like I said, NVAX at 485 is four is 150. There's a lot of these stocks within this database. There's 8,000 stocks in the market that fit this Ken Slim. And I research those every Sunday night for my subscribers. And that's been your strategy. It's been my strategy. My newsletter is going for 11 years and I've been doing that strategy for a lot longer than that, correct? What's your crypto strategy? My crypto is the Heinz. I scroll down and I look at every crypto. If anyone is at 90 cents, right under an even number, like Cardano at $1.90, going through two. You got um, Ripple, I mean, uh, XRP, let's say it's, or Doge, it's 48 cents. It's going through 50, the mini Heinz. I play the mini number through 50, or the Heinz number through a dollar and up the ladder between each dollar, that's how I play it. So I'm rolling through the dollar up to 44 cents on a profit. I'm out at 44. I rebuy it at 48 to go through 50 up to the next dollar. So I'm only missing four cents by playing it safe and taking my profits. When it goes through Heinz, the even number, let's say $5, I'm selling it at five forty-four, because odds are eight out of 10 times, it's going lower. If it goes higher, I'll rebuy at five forty-eight to play through the mini Heinz, five fifty, and I'll ride it up to six, selling at 94 right underneath the number and rebuying it at 98 through the number. So I'm wow. only missing about eight cents in every one dollar as the stock is moving from dollar to dollar to dollar. Okay, let's go into your indicators for like what you do for stocks, uh, the indicators, your daily indicators you use. Yeah, I use I don't use too many, but I have a cool name for that too. It's called the rail grind, like in snowboarding and skiing, if you guys know about that, because I'm a snowboarder as well. <laughs> doing that cool. a long time and i use the stochastics the slow stochastics underneath the chart as the stock is moving through from 90 to 95 the stochastics is rising higher you picture that right because this making a bar up yes now yeah. it's making a bigger bar through the even number the stochastics just went above 80%. So you've got a nice chairlift. You started there at 90. It's chairlifting up. It's 92, 93, 95. You're right under the even number. As it goes through the even number, it goes past 80% on the stochastics. Now you're in rail grind. If you keep that above 80%, you could stay in that thing. It may go 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. We saw SPRT. That was my swing newsletter pick on August 22nd. Three weeks ago, I picked it at 881. It went to 59. And I tell you, at 17, after it touched 11, I was like, dude, this thing is over. 
but I switched from the five minute chart to the 15 minute chart and the rail grind was still up there at 80%. And I rode that thing to $55 a share within 50 wow. up because it never broke below 80% on that stochastic. If, if I wasn't watching that, I would have wanted to sell it at 17, 18, 19. I'm like, short it now. There's no way it's going higher. But it kept on going because that indicator above 80%, you got to stay long in the stock until it crosses down. And that cross down through 80% is the big red bar, the first one it makes. Wow. So I'm really able to tell. I don't look at charts. I'm really able to tell from my trade play through 90 cents in the even number, what the green bars are going to look like, what the top is going to look like when it reverses and comes down. I call that my Cupid top. It's usually the end of the trade play when the stochastics reverse through and go back down under 80%. And you could, you could ride a stock like that during the day for an hour or two for the hugest gain. You could switch it the next day to the daily chart on the stochastics. And as long as that thing stays up above 80%, look at Etsy last week through 200. I played it from 190. It went through 200, ripped through. It's like a 220. It's still up above 80%. I want to sell it, but the stochastic on the daily is telling me to hold it until it reverses. It could go 230, 240, 250, 260. Who knows? I bought Lululemon, the same thing. It's like a three, dollars $400 stock. It just keeps on going above the daily on the rail grind. Um, you, still, you just got to hold it until it reverses because I'm no analyst by any means, man. I am a no analyst. Oh, well, we got that. <clears throat> I'm, yeah, I'm, a good, I'm a good stock picker, though, man. I know it's, I got a good system. Got a good system. Yeah, I you see. do. I mean, we, we all see. It's all about intuition. Yeah, all I, love, I love hearing that you say you don't love charts. Yeah. I'm about that. I don't. You know, listen, if charts were so good, mm -hmm. I would do it, and everybody else would do it, and they would win. But everybody else does the charts, and they lose. So why would I... You know, if they really worked, I would be telling you, look, dude, we got to run a Fibonacci across oh. the moving average oh down God. for the VWAP. <laughs> I'm like, oh, my God. Are you kidding me? And that, and that matters at times. And believe me, I'm, I'm definitely a part of that. But in the OTC especially, and that's my forte, it's fundamental. Yep. Uh, fundamentals. That's it. Yeah. And management. Yep. The disrupt disruptive sectors. What they have, the yeah, you can play, management yeah, you can, is the management. That's all I'm You can play that, that uh, Heinz play and just keep it above VWAP for the whole entire day. That would be another. That's kind of like a rail grind, another indicator just to keep it up there and see how long you're going to stay in it. Because I, I'm telling you, once how these stocks roll, like SPRT, BBIG last week, it went 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. I mean, I want to get out every, like, I'm, I'm antsy, you know? But you got to look at those kind of indicators to keep it, keep it all business and keep your mind out of it because your mind is your worst enemy, man. No, I can I feel that your mind can be your worst enemy. So <clears throat> tell us, you know, you sound like a pretty cool dude, right? So just tell us a little bit about some of the music that you listen to, or you know, how do you prep for pre market? Yeah, the pre-market starts around 8 o'clock a.m. in the Mojo chat room. And I usually play like 70s yacht music, like, you know, Asia, like all different kinds of like cool, mellow, mellow tunes. You know, but then the, when I'm doing my Mojo show, I do a daily show on YouTube called the Mojo Day Trading Show. I usually do it pre-market, sometimes recaps. The thing I hate about that is I can't play any music. Every time I play a note from a tune that I like, I get a copyright in my email from YouTube saying the video has been copyrighted and it can't be monetized and blah, blah. I'm like, dude, let me just play my music. I, the stocks run. I want to go crisscross and go play and jump, 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 making my, making my stocks jump. That if I, <laughs> I need it to run, I'll play that in the room. 
and you know, I'll play a little Beastie Boys or something like that, or you know, yeah, some, cool. some Eagles, some Led Zeppelin, some Grateful Dead. You know, nice. that's what I like. I do some some total devastation, some Snoop Dogg, all that. <laughs> you know, I got it all going on. <laughs> I like it all. I love that's playing. freaking awesome. Yeah, some of the older guys in the room they get turned off when I do that when I play that rap and all the boys. You know they don't like that, but what I do, <laughs> they said that's so awesome. they said turn off that hippity hop, huh? <laughs> yeah, like like Master Pro Trader Al, and he's an older guy. Oh. You know, you know he's into his philanthropy and. <laughs> <laughs> so shout out to Master he don't like Pro when I do the rap, but he likes my other songs though. <laughs> That's okay, hilarious. so give us the – so I do want to just remind everyone that we tweeted out um, Mike's Discord link. I know. I've got like five – I actually have like five people in my room for the first time. You guys are crazy. That's crazy. Oh, yeah, so we're getting messages like, hey, can we have the Discord link? But it's on the OTC Club's timeline. And it's if you also guys go here. on the OTC Club's timeline – Yes, and it's on the top of the chat. If you guys click that Discord and you guys want to message Mike, he did a special membership for everyone in this room yeah. right now for the OTC Club. Just let him know where you heard it from, which is the OTC Club, and he's giving you a free membership until he makes you some money, and then you guys could talk about yeah. you paying up with that membership. Absolutely. But, um, do you have any advice for any of the new traders? I sure do. My advice is find someone that cares about other people's trading and not all his own and willing to coach you on a simulator so you don't lose any of your own money before you actually get it and could be held accountable by someone doing it and then gives you the thumb up okay and you both agree it's time to rock and roll. That's what I would really recommend because if I had that when I was starting, it would have saved me years of time and millions of dollars. And then to add to that, um, a lot of us are just um, a lot of the people that we have on the OTC club um, audience do just stocks. Like what advice do you have to them for, you know, looking into the crypto space and investing there? I would say, in the crypto space and the stock space, you see a lot of hype, like Wall Street bets, and in the stock and all these social media influencers on the stock side, they don't last too long. And you can get very hurt chasing the FOMO, the fear of missing out, because someone printed support at 59 and 58, and it's back in the 20s, and if you're on margin, you lost all your money and timing you know, one guy's winning and one guy's losing. And, you know, you really need the right system that's back tested over and over. Because if you just go to the horse track and you bet a horse on every race and you lose every single day, the, you know, that's going to stay irrational more than you could stay solvent and make you broke. The market's going to do the same thing. With crypto, when the, when Bitcoin's rallying, it's like, the the herd has come in they've opened the doors and the women are running through the crazy for sale they go oh, it's a frenzy and anything you can buy in the store will work and it will work for many days no matter what coin it is and when bitcoin's not hot everyone hates it it goes down terrible and you got to be very patient when you bftd and you buy the fucking dip because you can't do it all at once. You do it as like a cost average and over history and time, if you have patience to hodl, that's hold that particular coin, you'll do very well in the crypto space. It's much different from the stock space. And trading wise, inner day, it's the same. You're a junkie trader, you're looking for your moves inner day to trade Bitcoin with leverage or whatever you do. But my system, if you find a coin, you could trade it through the even number and you can be a crypto trader. Otherwise, you don't really have any. You're just like everybody else looking at a chart, trying to be an analyst. It just doesn't work all the time. And I want something in this market that's going to work pretty much all the time for me 
because with my mentality and my aggressiveness and my A personality, it's going to wipe me out of the game if I don't win eight out of ten times. Those losers, it's not my personality to, uh, you know, nowadays, because I've been doing it for 30 years, but to teach somebody and to have coach them, that's my big thing. I got to coach you to stop and to not take the lo- to get out of the damn futures trade or the stock trade and reprice it because it's not coming back. Your ass is cringing right now in the seat. You need to sell the stock. And I'm the guy that could <laughs> tap you on the shoulder and just sell it and reprice it. Once you learn how to reprice a trade, you become a pro trader. And that's what's going to make you respect the account and learn that a little bit of shares like the buddy, you don't need to lose three quarters of a million or make a million in one trade. I learned trading and when you're especially trying to build something and your people are looking at you, if you go, hey, I made a half a million dollars on this size of an account where they're going to be like, dude, you were very, very aggressive to make that kind of profit. You had to take a huge amount of risk. And that's not really conducive for new traders in the beginning, but they all like the quick money. They all see the flashy things and, you know, dude, I could go steal. I could go take Tiger Woods golf clubs, but I ain't going to hit them like Tiger Woods, man. It takes time. <laughs> That's a good example. <laughs> it takes time. It takes coaching. It takes a lot of practice. It takes more practice than playtime. When I go in a golf tournament, that's two, that's four hours, but I practiced for 40 hours before I went on there. So I know I'm not going to make no mistakes because if I make a mistake, I ain't going to win. And that's the difference between a champion on the golf side and the sports side and the trading side is they don't make mistakes. And that's how you can be a winner at this, at this game. And that's what I try to teach everybody is try not to make the mistakes. That's Mike, cool. you made a great um, a comparison to golf. Um, I was a, I was a scratch golfer before my accident, and now I cannot play golf since the last eight years. But as a, as as two sports, you can believe it. It's mental. On the golf course, if you miss a shot, you better forget about that shot when you duffed it or you put it here, because mentally it affects your next three. Then it affects your next three holes. It is very similar, and that's a great comparison to the to the stock market. Is when you mess up, and I saw OTC method and Kiko stocks post something, which which I respect that man as a trader. You have to forget about your misses because they will happen. And my biggest thing in the last eight months is like you make mistakes, and I was a new trader, and I still like don't read charts, but I have teams that read charts for me. You make mistakes and you learn quickly, but if you can have the edge on the EQ side, emotional intelligence, you can read the market, learn from your mistakes, and if you don't learn from them, you you will lose. And I, and it takes months to learn from them. I've wrote them down and I've made the same mistakes six times in a row. But now nice. after ten months, I, I've learned from them, and now I'm I'm becoming a little bit more invincible. I'm becoming a bit more smart. Let me tell you. The, so you it's a very great cool? comparison, sir. This is what I teach in one of my courses. Yeah. I'm going to tell you about it. I shot a – look on my Twitter. I posted my card yesterday. I shot a 67. I shot five under yesterday. My and man. Great, great. I also hit the pin from 55 out. It should have went in for the eagle. I had to tap that in. And two others <laughs> lift. I could have had two, two left. But I, I stubbed one off the tee. The guy says, dude, he's human. Meanwhile, I stubbed it. I hit a five with 225 to the middle of the green, made up for that shot. Beautiful. But my point is, Dr. Gio Valiente, I'm a disciple of him as well. He is Tiger Woods' mental sports psychologist. He's sports psychologist to Justin Rose and all the greatest golfers of all time. His name is Dr. Gio Valiente. He's, he's the man. He's come up with a... Uh, term called social cognitive theory and he's applied it to golf and it's basically taking uh, the fear out of doing something uh, bad and uh, getting rid of all the noise and the best one at that was Tiger Woods he had his process goals his outcome goals his self-belief and his patience 
he had his process. His outcome goal was to beat Jack Nicholas's record of all these majors. How is he going to do that? With his process of going through his routine and winning all his tournaments with the self-belief that he could do that, setting his goals really lofty high and having the patience to do it. That is trading. Social cognitive theory is the same thing with trading. Self-belief. The process is the Heinz. I'm going to do a thousand Heinz trades at $200 each. You just made $200,000. That's the process. Have the self-belief that you can do that and the patience to do a thousand trades for $200 each. You're the man. Yeah. That's freaking crazy. That's it. Well, we have we have something for you. It's game time. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, so we have a 30-second game for you. Um, you're going to name your favorite ticker that you're excited about and why. And you have 30 seconds and go. I am most excited about, I posted it on my Twitter. Let me go to it. I got to read it. Fanny Farmini. It's called, it's a mushroom stock. Edible, fungible shiitake mushrooms, 57 cents. On Friday, it traded 235 million shares, up 1,500% in volume. And it looks like it may break out through 66 cents and head to a dollar. Wow. Okay. And what is that ticker again? The ticker is F-A-M-I. Fred, Andy, Mary, Indian. And it's at 57 cents. Amazing. All right. Well, thank you for that. You did great. And to the panel, do you guys have any questions before I go ahead and ask? And the audience, if you guys have any questions for Pro Trader Mike, go ahead and request now. Um, the panel, do you guys have anything? Yeah, I do want to ask about Fami. How do you what's your opinion on, about the offering that happened Friday? Well, that's probably why it's they're pumping it up. It may go one more day. Because what they're doing <clears throat> is they're selling shares now before the, the offering. Before the company issues all this stock, they're selling right now. So when they get those, it's an offsetting transaction. So they're getting a lot of value right now back to the company by selling shares they don't own. And they're pumping the crap out of it. It could go a bunch higher because the higher it goes, the more volume the more shares they could sell against the offering and the more money they could raise for the company and for the beneficial mm. guy that's doing the financing. That's why these things do that because there's, they announce, and usually if you look in the news and there's a big pump and they haven't announced the offering, they're doing it now and in the next day or so they may announce something like that. That's how Wall Street works. It's a complete manipulation, voodoo, hoodoo. They, they, they rip you off, man. Wow. Yep, that's what's happening. They're selling short into that pump and dump to get bigger financing for the company against the shares that haven't even been issued yet. They're short, naked shorting them and doing all that dark pool crap it's it's very un not transparent and that's going to go away in the future as DeFi centralization and cryptocurrency take over and peer-to-peer -peer happens and my grandpappy dies and all his money goes to me and i say yo <laughs> pappy you didn't want to buy that crypto well too bad i'm putting all your money into it now ha ha ha, -ha. <laughs> oh my goodness <clears throat> does anybody else have any questions matt uh, I just apologize oh, that I cut out there again. Sorry, my man. I was, I think I was in the moment. And Dude, Warren Buffett's out. son can't wait to get all that money to put into crypto. He's like, that. You don't believe in that, dude? Get the hell out of here and die. Right? Yeah, that's true. That's so. True. I will tell you one thing, Mike. I am one hundred percent in on blockchain, crypto being the future. Um, Whoa, we got Matt on our side now. Okay. Um, I, I do not own a coin yet, but I am seven figures deep on 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 blockchain investments. So all you got to be um, if real if you don't want to diversify, now. just be long Ethereum because if that balloon hasn't caught up. 
to the value and, of what and you Bitcoin know what my, my 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 platform is is CGCX MJWL. It's all Ethereum. It's not Bitcoin. Yeah, it's all Ethereum. So I bought um, Yearn Finance at seventy. I bought it, Yearn it, Finance at seventy yeah. three cents. Everybody it's forty two thousand a coin. See me see see this go. I'll absolutely ham. So I believe yes. Wait, Ethereum hold on. That, so <laughs> are you feeling? Did we miss that? <laughs> Did we miss what yeah, you just I bought Yearn sure. Finance. You know, because Yearn? that's the decentralized. That's the finance. So don't tell me it's not <laughs> going to be like peer to peer. You have Intel. I have Intel. Let's do some trading. It's I bought it at seventy three cents. It's forty two thousand a coin. So I do no. have the next couple of coins <laughs> that are going to do that. I My have man. them, guys. I My have, man. I, I have it. You know what it's called? Let me tell you. I'm I'm writing a book right now. It's going to be called like the Ken Slim for stocks. It's going to be called Ransom. You know, it's like a whole nother show. Ransom stands for the coins rank. It has to have a high increasing rank like I've seen all the greatest coins over time. A stands for adoption of the wallet and the watch list through all coins cap mark. You have to see the watch list. Every time you refresh, more people watching the coin and see how many people download the wallet for adoption. Mm -hmm. N stands for network protocol. What category is it in? Is it in social, DeFi, uh, yield farming? What is it in? What kind of new is bringing to the coin? The Mm -hmm. S is the supply. The O is the outlook. And the M is the MoMA. I'm creating my own seven characteristics for the best performing coins of all time and i'm gonna write a book about it and become That's the next amazing. William amazing so. oh my god look at you man i know it's so cool mindak do you have anything for mike i don't actually but i really really enjoyed this and i'm just honestly just going crazy on the nfts right now <laughs> <laughs> i love that <laughs> But like, These hey, Mike, NFT. I'm telling you, man. You, you're NFT. addicted. Matt, Matt is an NFT He's addicted. Himself, <laughs> Ever since that one spaces, he's addicted. I promise you. Yeah, guys, t- it would be a pleasure. Just, you know, <laughs> it doesn't take a long time. Just stop by the chat room, say hi. We can do some trading together. I'll get you all a funded trading account. You can turn it on. It doesn't cost you any capital. Trade the firm capital. Make some dollars each day. And let's live the American dream, man. Yes, thank you so much, uh, Mike. Do for... a white picket fence. Yeah, you got it. <laughs> thank you so much, Mike, for being our guest on the show. And you guys, we just want to remind you, we tweeted out his Discord on the OTC Club timeline. And all you have to do is mention to Mike that you were on the OTC Club and you get a free membership. He's going to help you make some money. And then from there, you guys could talk about... Um, Now that you have money, you could have a membership. So go ahead and do that. This was recorded. If you guys want to re-listen to it, it will be up uh, later this week on our YouTube channel. And make sure to follow everyone on the panel and Mike as well if you're not already. And we will we will see you guys this week on Wednesday for West Coast Closer Wednesday. And then next Sunday again with our new guest. And I hope you guys okay, have an talk. amazing trading week. Crypt talk, talk is next, next Friday. Friday. Crypt talk. Yes, yes, yes. All right, okay, thank you guys so much. Thank you. Bye bye. Hey, have a good week. Great to hear from you, man. Thanks for having you on. And I agree with you. My my thing to get into stock was watching um, Wolf of Wall Street. Those pink street, pink slips. Yes. I pink thought slips, we were baby. Pink slips, right. Um, love you guys. Moon, hey guys, just all I gotta say is Moon Boys. All right, you heard moon it. Moon Boys, heard. I'll see you. Moon, <laughs> moon Boys, moon boys and girls. Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs>